Hello, welcome to the Friday, April 10th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today we have a quick diary by Manuel about how to spoof OS fingerprints. Now, Nmap, of course, always had the ability to pretty accurately identify operating systems, and it had a well-established database of different operating system fingerprints. A system under an attacker's control can, of course, fake the responses it's sending back. And Manuel is introducing here a quick tool called OS Fooler NG that's able to impersonate different operating systems. Pretty neat little tool to play around with and learn more about how these uh, subtle differences, in particular in TCP, can be used to identify an operating system. And with everybody still working from home, it's of course really important that you do have robust remote access to your systems. One way to achieve this is the Dell ID Rack cards. Uh, These are plugin boards that give you full access to power the console over IP networks and well, hopefully not over the internet. Because Dell just released an update for the ID rack cards from version 7 through 9 that fixes an unauthenticated buffer overflow vulnerabilities in these systems. So an attacker could use this vulnerability to effectively take over the ID rack card. And of course, once they have access to that, they essentially do have a console access, like physical access to the affected system. Now, as part of the advisory, Dell does reiterate that you should connect these cards only to a separate management network. So definitely be very careful about how you deploy them and they should never ever be connected directly to the internet. Now, one of Adobe's software packages that I mention quite often for its vulnerabilities is Magento. Magento is shopping cart software that makes it relatively easy to set up an online store, but it has had a rich history of vulnerabilities. Today, Visa announced that it will no longer support Magento version 1. Now, Magento version 2 is out for a few years now, so really time to update there. In September 2018, Adobe announced that as of June 2020, Magento 1 will officially be end of life. So Visa pretty much is following Magento's lead here, saying if Magento no longer supports it, if there will no more be no more updates, then you probably shouldn't run it for any credit card processing either. And if you are looking something to experiment with for this weekend, there's an interesting blog post by Enable Security about a vulnerability in Slack's turn servers. Now, I don't recommend that you're playing with this against Slack and they fix the problem now. But if you are running any turn servers yourself or Eston servers for that matter, you may want to read the blog post for some of the issues that can happen here. Turn stands for traversal using relays around NAT and essentially what it provides is provides the ability to set up tunnels essentially of the lack of a better word between hosts that are behind NAT so they can communicate directly with each other for things like video streaming and of course the little bit older version of this protocol STUN is often used for voice over IP and also video over IP calls. The issue with this protocol is that essentially you can sort of tell uh, the servers where to forward packets to, and that can of course easily be abused to turn them essentially into an arbitrary relay or proxy of packets. In Slack's case, this enabled the attacker to connect to internal hosts within the Slack network. Could also be used, since it's NAT, to connect to unroutable IPs, like for example, localhost, 
or the special IP addresses that Amazon uses for its metadata service. So pretty interesting vulnerability, I think, and something that's really more related to the configuration of these servers. So if you're running servers like this, you probably should pay attention and take a closer look. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening. And just want to point out, we still have the domain classifier running. I will add a link to the show notes again, and I'm planning a major update to it uh, for tomorrow, for Friday, that will actually show a little preview screenshots of the page so you don't have to visit the page that you actually need to classify to make things a little bit faster and also safer for everybody. That's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.